You've probably watched multiple videos on coronavirus, but what if I said you're probably still not aware of at least 50% of the information in this video. Now, I understand this is a tech channel which kinda makes this video quite unorthodox, but it's just not easy to stick to my routine, keep posting tech videos, pretending as if everything around me is fine. Coincidentally, a few other YouTubers also feel the same way. Anyway, I've already been doing a lot of reading, research, predictions. I've also been in touch with a couple of doctors. Been doing all this just to keep everyone around me updated and aware of what's about to happen. My family, my friends, their families. So basically the content was already here. All I had to do for this video was just write everything down in a presentable form. The channel has over 2 lakh subscribers with thousands of people watching every video. So I just thought during such a critical time like this, even if it's a bit unorthodox, I should make use of this platform to share some important information. At the time of shooting, I'm not sure about the title, but it's probably something very clickbaity because again, I want this video to reach as many people as possible. So forget the title, here's what we are gonna talk about. What India has done so far? Is it enough? What else should be done by the government? Are we slowing down the process in any way? And finally, what should we do? As in, it's not about the basic guidelines like washing hands, social distancing and stuff. You're already aware of all of that. And most importantly, there is absolutely nothing related to politics here. So uh, there is no political bias anywhere. So if you're looking for that kind of masala, this is not the right video. Also, I am not going to entertain you by talking about conspiracy theories. Some people say China set some buildings on fire while people were still stranded inside. Um, some say China created the virus to destroy the world economy. Well, they may be true, they may be false, but I am not gonna get into any of them because I just don't see the point. Sure, we can show a lot of hatred towards them, but I'll be honest, we don't have the time to hate anybody or any country right now. The best we can do is, well, we'll talk about it in, the, in a second. So if you want to be safe, if you want to keep your loved ones safe, you need an entirely different mentality right now. This video is more about what you and I should be doing as citizens. Because the government has been doing a lot. So let's start with that, what India has done so far. Knowing our strengths and weaknesses and acting accordingly is important. That's exactly what we've done so far. Our public health and me medical care systems are broken. That's a huge weakness. We don't have even a fraction of the number of ventilators we need. That's the case with hospital beds, isolation beds as well. They are in some serious deficit. Now, I don't know if you know this, but most European countries have excellent healthcare systems. They are among the best in the world, but look at the terrible state they are in right now. For a very long time, European countries just refused to cl close their borders. It was ridiculous. Even when the number of cases was growing at a rate of more than 500, 600 a day, they didn't bother much. The Eiffel Tower was open, the world's largest museum was open, millions of women joined a strike in Spain on Women's Day, Germany was still conducting football matches. Europe took things very lightly. Right now, Europe as a whole is getting over 25,000 new cases every day. The British Prime Minister is infected. And remember, the population of the entire European continent is only about half of India's population. If India took things lightly, some experts predicted that we would have over 300 million cases, that's more than 30 crores. Basically, we would be in a much worse situation given the 2x population and poor healthcare systems. The best way to tackle this weakness is to make sure people don't end up in hospital beds in the first place. That's why the entire country is in lockdown right now, at a very early stage. No international or domestic passenger flight is in service, no trains, no buses, absolutely no movement whatsoever. This is huge. Similarly, the US is planning to give $1,500 to every American adult in, in every home because the US can afford doing it. India is not a very rich country in terms of money. That's a weakness. To tackle it, 
the government has announced a relief package that also covers a lot of things that matter. About 80 crore people who are struggling will get free cereals and cooking gas along with some cash for three months. An insurance coverage of 50 lakh rupees for about 20 lakh healthcare workers across the country has also been announced. And also free rice, free wheat, free pulses for three months for a fraction of the population. RBI has cut repo rates and put a pause on EMI repayments, credit card repayments. Contact your banks for more information. In addition to all these central government initiatives, the state governments have also been helping us out. I saw the police handing over packaged foods to the homeless here in Chennai. Kerala has been doing some pretty amazing stuff. Even relatively less developed states like Odisha and Bihar are trying to do a lot for their people. So, things don't seem to be all that difficult for us. We just need to stay home, follow all precautions and guidelines, and poof, the virus will be gone, right? Nope. That brings us to number two. Whatever the government has been doing, is it enough? I mean, the government is already working on some of the things I'm gonna talk about now. So this is not criticism in any way. This is more like having a look at how some other countries have managed to contain the virus to an extent and how far we have adopted those methods. So lockdown is an excellent first step. But that's not all it takes to end the plague. Now, I'll give you a scenario to think about. But before that, let's quickly have a look at some facts. Some you may already know. Number one, the number of cases in India is not the actual number of cases. It's the number of recorded cases. There are hundreds, more likely thousands of infected people out there who have not been tested yet. In fact, some groups of scientists have estimated the actual number of cases in India to be somewhere around 21,000. I'm not blindly saying scientists. You can find the source in the description. This was said by Dr. Ramanan Lakshminarayanan, who is an epidemiologist. In fact, you have doubts about anything I mention in this video, just go to the description. There's a whole bunch of links to all sources. Number two, if you're infected, you won't even have symptoms for the first three to four days. Or if you have very good immunity, you would become all right in a couple of weeks and you wouldn't even realize you were infected for a while. And the symptoms are also not unique. It starts with cough, mild headache. Those are the most common things people get on a regular basis. Now, in the beginning of March, I was coughing a lot. I had severe body pain and I had a mild headache. But the last time I traveled was on Feb 24 to New Delhi. So I was pretty sure it was nothing. Or who knows? This is why screening at airports isn't a big deal. I mean, it should be done. It's a must. But I'm just saying it just detects a fraction of infected people. Anyway, I'm glad that flights are shut down now. Number three, if you're young, you have almost a 0% chance of dying from coronavirus. But if you are old, older than 55 or 60 with some underlying health conditions, especially diabetes or hypertension, you're most likely to suffer a lot. Now, yes, I agree, I'm not a doctor, but I do have a bunch of doctor friends. Two of them I've been in constant touch with and studies also suggest that hypertension and diabetes are too dangerous for those infected with coronavirus. Okay. We are done with facts. Let me now give you, give you that scenario. Let's say those 21,000 people are infected already. A huge chunk of them are young ones like us. So no problem, we won't die anyway. But India is one of those few countries where young ones stay with their parents until they get married or get a job in a different place. And now that the country is locked down, even those who stay in different cities have managed to come back home to stay with their parents. So. I don't have data for this, but it was quite evident from the fact that bus terminals across the country were flooded with people just after the lockdown was announced. So at the time of announcement, let's say there were 10,000 infected people out of the 21,000 there are right now. So basically the infected young people are transmitting the infection to old people and possibly other young people as we speak. So the point is lockdown is not perfect it is still very good, much better than no lockdown. So if lockdown is not perfect, then what is? Well, the answer to this is something you've probably already come across. Conduct more tests. That's it. Again, I'm not a scientist. I'm merely a carrier of information talking about carriers of infection. 
but conducting more tests has proven to be very effective in some countries. Now, let me start by sharing this briefing by the World Health Organization. This was on March 16, 12 days back. WHO gave a simple message to all countries. Test, test, test. In fact, that's the whole success mantra of South Korea. They did mass testing at early stages and their position on this list went from number 2 to number 11. They get less than 100 new cases per day. The number of cases has still not crossed 10,000. As on March 20, 6,000 tests per million people were done in South Korea. The US had done only 300 and India had done only 10. Of course, there is a huge difference in population between these countries, but the virus doesn't know that. It doesn't care. Anyway, after March 20, the US has been testing lakhs of people. They have been testing over 1 lakh people every day for the past 4 or 5 days. And they are looking to ramp up testing even further. They just approved a test kit that can give results in less than 15 minutes. So expect a huge spike in the number of tests in the US. India has four times the population of the US. But the US has done over 700,000 tests as on March 28. India had done only 27,000 as on March 27. Of course, India is not uh, affected to that extent yet, but still doing less than 5,000, 6,000 tests a day, even after 1,000 confirmed cases, is quite scary and risky. Now, remember, I said the US did not test many people early on. As on March 28, there were over 100,000 confirmed cases in the US. Now, among these 100,000 people, at least 30,000 people would have been carrying the infection before the US decided to uh, implement a bigger testing program. And clearly, those people affected even more people. The chain just kept getting longer. In fact, even after testing over 700,000 people, experts believe the US is still lagging behind in terms of testing. Of course, the US was not in lockdown, that's why we are seeing such huge numbers now. They just failed badly uh, during the initial stages. They had all the resources to try and stop the spread, but they didn't. But at least they are uh, on track now, trying to prevent any further loss of lives. So that's good for them. So here's what happened in South Korea. They tested so many people, almost everyone who arrived from a different country, symptoms or no symptoms, young or old, they understood very clearly that the virus does not discriminate. So they split up the positive cases into four categories. The sickest and the eldest were sent to hospitals for better care. The young and those with mild symptoms were quarantined in dormitories that the government borrowed from some private companies. So basically almost every infected person was isolated as early as possible. That's how they were able to contain it to a great extent. In contrast, India is not really testing as many people as I said. Someone I know, an acquaintance rather, uh, recently came, to, came back to Chennai from the United States. She was just asked to stay home for 15 days. The problem with this kind of uh, handling is she hasn't been staying home. I mean, before the lockdown. The government did not ignore people intentionally, but with the number of test kits we had as of last week, we couldn't afford to test many people. We had to make sure the kits were being used efficiently. Not just us, most countries have been uh, doing the same thing. They are testing only those who are uh, old or those who have severe symptoms or those who traveled to certain countries in the past one month. India just refuses to believe that community transmission is already taking place. So people with no travel history to certain countries are not being tested. Young people who have mild symptoms are also being overlooked. This poses a huge threat because number one, like I said, they could transmit the virus to other people at home. And number two, although we are in lockdown, Remember, we are still going out once in a while to get groceries and stuff. We bring new stuff home from outside. And if you didn't know, plastic and stainless steel are some of the major carriers of the virus. The virus on them could be stable for up to three days. People going out for essential work is not scary. But the fact that some of them could be infected even without their knowledge is what's troubling. And number three, the most important of all, Young people do get infected, almost as easily as old people do. Let's take three countries that have done lakhs of tests. Number one, South Korea. Look at the split up. 
people in the in their 20s are affected the most number 2 usa one in three cases is less than 40 years of age number 3 germany age 35 to 59 that's where the majority is and because these countries are actively isolating all of these cases they are preventing a lot of old people from getting infected and hence these countries do not have very high death rates the us has over 100000 cases but less than 2000 deaths and remember they were quite late to start mass testing germany with over 50000 cases has less than 500 death cases south korea less than 200 deaths just compare these numbers to those in other countries now this is why it's really scary that india and many other countries are not testing as many young adults as they should because going by statistics it is quite evident that young people do get infected if we don't detect and isolate them they are going to keep infecting more and more people including old people and as we know old people may not recover the chances are not high now i'm sure somebody is going to comment there aren't many deaths in germany because the average age of infected people is just 46 whereas in italy it's 63 that's why more people are dying in italy well the simple answer to this is only if you test many young people the average age will come down from 63 to 50 or 40 guys it's a terrible cycle young people don't get tested because they don't show symptoms they pass on the infection to old people who do show symptoms old people get tested the average age goes up and people start assuming the virus is affecting old people more than it affects young people we need to break that cycle so how to address all these issues what should our government do next number 1 test more people number 2 prepare more beds number 3 set up a lot of isolation wards number 4 extend the lockdown period now let me tell you something the government has already started doing everything that i just mentioned they have ramped up the testing process but we still need to do a lot more less than 5000 6000 tests a day is not nearly enough if you want to go get tested voluntarily it would cost you 4500 rupees right now but fortunately a pune based company has come up with a test kit they got the approval they have started manufacturing the kits will probably hit the markets today the expected price is 1200 rupees although i think we might have to pay a little bit more uh, to the hospital that's doing the test for you hopefully not more than 1500 rupees in total and then uh, several hospitals are being built by both central and state governments i guess and the ministry of railways is doing a fantastic job they are ready to turn their training institute hostel to a backup quarantine facility and they've also been converting train coaches to isolation wards they've sanitized everything some of them are 100% ready to accommodate patients right now the government has also hosted some really useful websites links can be found in the description and many other places are turned into isolation wards in fact kilpok medical college in chennai that's where my friend is practicing right now they're turning a seven story facility into an isolation ward these are good to hear but since this is such a huge country with over 100 crore people things do tend to go wrong here and there the migrant workers and the underprivileged are in a lot of trouble right now they are struggling to go back home a lot of them don't don't get enough food and water i mean imagine their situation hundreds of thousands of them are stranded they fear hunger and thirst more than they fear the virus I really hope this situation gets handled as early as possible. I also don't understand one thing this is just my opinion uh, private entities are not working with the government here or vice versa I'm not sure. Our country is flooded with private hospitals. I don't know the formalities and the technical difficulties behind this but it would be great to see them join hands with the government to tackle the situation. Even private colleges, private schools, they are all closed anyway. We could really make use of them. uh moreover these places are much cleaner and more hygienic as far as i know uh which also matters a lot because a lot of people hate being quarantined in unhygienic government facilities uh now i understand this is uh, a time of crisis and we are not supposed to complain much but forget what's right and what's wrong fact is people are trying to escape because of lack of hygiene some isolated people have been posting videos uh, of the facilities and they are pretty bad pretty unusable anyway whatever it is people escaping from quarantine facilities that needs to stop one way or another so why did i make this video what is the purpose 
Is it for the government officials? Absolutely not. I'm sure they already know everything and uh, like we just saw, we've, they've already started working on certain things. Even otherwise, I don't think any of them will watch this video. So I made this to tell you, please take this seriously and educate everyone around you. Prepare them for what's, what's about to come. Someone I was talking to was shocked to hear that the lockdown could very well be extended for another 15 days or a month. Yes, if things are only gonna get worse from here, obviously it will be extended. So educate them with everything you learned from this video and other sources so that they don't end up doing stupid things like escaping quarantine to meet their girlfriends, hiding travel history and attending parties, skipping quarantine to get married and put hundreds of lives at risk, popping in paracetamol pills while landing so while screening at airports they won't be caught. I understand some people genuinely feel very ill so they want to feel better so that's why they take pills but I mean that's absolutely fine but disclose it to the airport officials don't try to hide it. Of course since we are in lockdown temporarily most of these will not happen but the point is if you ever get into a situation where you could be sent to a quarantine facility be honest to the authorities don't try to hide anything and escape just so you could come back home. Imagine how guilty you would feel if you transmitted the infection to your own mother or father at home or wherever it is. I I'm really sorry, but I feel this is one of the few times go the government is actually doing a lot of things and we are the ones resisting it, hindering or slowing down the process. Guys, a mad woman licked a police officer a guy refused to go back home and argued with the police like an idiot and people gathered last Sunday at 5 p.m. and celebrated, celebrated as if we defeated coronavirus. We were only supposed to clap hands from our balconies to appreciate everyone who put their lives at risk like the police, the delivery guys, the pharmacists, the doctors for saving us. We were not supposed to gather and put our own lives at risk for nothing. And while most people are going out only to get groceries or other essential items, I still do see some people roaming around casually for no reason. I saw that in videos as well as with my own eyes. And speaking of videos, most important of all, verify anything and everything you receive on WhatsApp before forwarding it to multiple people. If it's fake, don't just refrain from forwarding it to other people but also inform the sender that it's fake and ask them to stop forwarding it. Post it as, as a story on Instagram and WhatsApp and mention that it's fake and always assume that everybody around you is infected. That's what we need to do when we have absolutely no idea who is infected and who isn't. Just assume everyone is infected and act accordingly. That's what a lot of people have already been doing. I had to go to a bank a couple of times in the past few days and I was surprised at how strict and precautious they were. I was glad to see it. But I have also been noticing that a lot of people are being quite lethargic about the whole thing. Some of them are like the virus will be gone this summer. See, that's what I'm talking about. Nobody is 100% sure that the weather will have a huge effect on the outbreak. I also saw images of some tablets claiming to be the cure. Guys, trust me, if they find a cure, you'll be informed by the government, the news channels on, on TVs, multiple uh, sources, not just from your uncle's cousin sister on WhatsApp. And I've also been reading a lot of reports of doctors being abused and sent out of societies because people fear the doctors might pass on the infection. Guys, do not do this. Don't let anybody do this. If you believe in God, if you worship God, I'm sorry, the temples, the churches, the mosques are all closed. Doctors are the only gods left right now. Nobody else can save you. And this is how we treat them. It's really, really, really sad and disgusting to say the least. If you notice any doctor being lethargic, if you think they're not taking precautions, then let them know, send a notice or do whatever it is you want. But kicking them out of your society, when or if this gets over, this is not something India should be remembered for. India should be remembered for coming together in times of crisis. Donations are pouring in from all, all corners of the country. I personally know a lot of middle class people who have donated more than 1000 rupees. That's the compassion. These are the details, by the way, donate as much as you can. Even if it's 10 rupees, it's going to make a difference. 
Experts believe that the growth in the number of cases will reach the peak by the end of April or May or the beginning of May. And if all of us work together, if everyone understands the gravity of the situation, if everyone takes this seriously, maybe, just maybe, we can prevent the transmission and end up with tens of thousands of cases instead of lakhs. You don't have to like or subscribe. All I need is for you to share the video, share it with every single person you care about, force them to watch it, share it on social media, share it on those family groups on WhatsApp. If there is any important information I've missed out on, do let me know in the comment section. If you have any doubts about the content in this video, you can find all the sources in the description. Maybe one or two might be missing. In that case, let me know. I'll update the description. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for sticking with me for the like 20, 25 minutes. Hopefully things get better at least by May or June. Until then, take good care of yourself and everyone around you, especially doctors and other healthcare workers.